welcome back to the Joe and Todd show. I'm Todd Wade, and this is you Joe always say, Mathis. You always say, like, I'm Todd Wade. I'm Todd. I don't want to touch my microphone. <laughs> I'm Joe Mathis. <laughs> Joe and Todd show. This is, a, this is my favorite episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I, I, this, I like this a lot. This is a how to read how to repeat business or how to get repeat business. Can you repeat that? <laughs> repeat business. The, um, you know, sometimes I, sometimes I get a fear that I, I come across as manipulating. <laughs> like I don't want to ever be, you know, I, this is something that I think I figured out. I authentically did. You know, you helped me kind of see that I was purposefully doing something that I didn't even realize I was doing. I think uh, that's the point you got to get to. But just natural. But being intentional, being intentional and natural in doing something. It's not a system. It's not a follow these steps. It's, it's kind of say, second nature. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. and it, it is to me. And I think that's um, that's that's part of what we want to help people get to. That's part of the place we want creatives to be is how to get people to come back after they've purchased from you. They've right. they've used your services or whatever the case is. How how do you get them to to come back again, and how do you know that's what's happening? You know, I think we're, that's we're going to give you some pro tips. Pro tips. Pro You're going to give me pro tips. No. Oh, we're, we're going to give we are the going listener. To give. That's good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Pro tips. So they'll come back. And repeat. Our listeners will come back. No, I th- I think uh, I think there is a lot of a lot of things we do naturally so, as clients. I mean, I mean as, as a provider. The client. first thing that came to my mind when I started making out these notes is. Um, I think one of the main reasons people keep coming back to work with us is because you're just so much fun to work with. I mean, we laugh. I mean, you just kind of build that rapport with clients. And, you know, even today we were on a Zoom call and you're like calling out that everybody had a white shirt on in the Zoom call. Just Well, it was kind of weird. It was kind of funny. Like everyone had a white shirt on except for me and you with your taupe shirt. But... (laughs) Yeah, and you, I mean, but you just kind of made it more friendly and it wasn't all business and you're, you're, you work, it's just natural for you, but it's, it's um, appealing to people and they want to work with that, with that comfortable environment and people, and people want to laugh in a meeting. You know, I, I, to be really transparent, since it's just you and I here, no, um, no one's listening, no one's listening. I think part of that is born out of awkwardness. I think there is a certain mm-hmm. amount of awkwardness about me and always has been. And, and you part are of awkward. What? You are kind of awkward. I, you're gonna say that. <laughs> and so are you. And so, but I think part of the fun, part of the, I, I want to break the ice and I want, I want there to be a sense of, Hey, it's not all business. And I, you know, the call today is a good example of, of a, it, it felt really heavy. It felt kind of, I felt kind of awkward and uh, they didn't know us. They'd never met us before. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were just trying to come in all business. It's very businesslike. Very mm-hmm. businesslike and very, um, and I, you know, I think part of the challenge too with Zoom calls, we talked about this before, has been it's so flat. <clears throat> There's not a dimension to it. Mm-hmm. You can't see someone's shoes. It's, it's and difficult to have nuts. interaction. Got to see people's shoes. <laughs> and and so, you know, I think that was, that was part of it was it felt really flat. And so, so to me to kind of, get out of the awkwardness I needed to to be fun and uh, mm-hmm. and so I think that's that is intentional um, uh, intentional way to do it but I, I, I appreciate you say that's that's yeah. that's kind of you I think we get repeat business because you're responsible <laughs> 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 so well, while I'm being fun guess, you're responsible yeah. and I think that that uh, really does give clients that sense of you know trust and I think there's a certain amount that they're going to come back to us because they know that our billing is fair. Our information we give them is we're going to do what we say mm-hmm. because of you, and uh, and that you're going to hold me to what I say. And that's I think good. that's I think that's important too. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get repeat business. Um, um, well, and the, one of the other things we talked about was kind of creating that we culture, and you know, saying we want to do this and kind of just embedding yourself with them um, in the trenches and, you know, uh, doing events is tough. It's a, it's, it's a hard experience. It's a lot of work to get to the night of the event and you kind of become family 
um, in the process of planning an event, and especially in the, the day of, a lot goes wrong. You know, things go wrong, and you got to fix it. And there's, I just realized know, someone spilled stuff on their shirt, and you got to fix it, and whatever. Oh, um, or button up, zip something, or all the things that happen yes, with an event. Use that, a safety pin. <clears throat> yeah, somewhere I never thought I'd use a safety pin. Yeah, um, I just realized though, our friend Ace Corvo. Mm-hmm. is the one that taught us part of this part of what we're saying right now we probably need to give complete oh, yeah. credit to him because remember him talking about um, you know once he kind of he's a photographer and once he comes in and does one wedding he oh, really right. becomes family <clears throat> and mm-hmm. yeah, uh, he true. he is a he's a master he's natural very natural at he it is. he's so he just, uh, congenial and friendly yeah he, he's he's your favorite uncle and you <laughs> want him to be your uncle <laughs> And you want him to come to every party, and of it's course funny. you want him at your wedding. Take exactly, pictures. of course. Yeah. And and uh, so once he does one family wedding, he pretty much gets all of them. And I, mm-hmm. I think that's uh, that's credit to him. I mean, he's he's just yeah. he's just amazing that way. Well, it's something and, to aspire to, and um, again, that's a great way to earn repeat business is to to make yourself part of the family, and um, to be that congenial uncle. Um, so to speak. Well, you know, I've said with events a lot of times, and I, I think it's true for a lot of create creatives. Um, as a creative, I'm I have a lot of emotion I put into what I do, mm-hmm. and so I'm putting emotion to someone's a lot of times their best day of their life, and a lot of times yeah. their worst day of their life, uh, their weddings, their funerals, their celebrations, their uh, big awards. You know, their their recognitions. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a. Uh, one of our clients who's getting a national honor in a couple of weeks, we're going to be part of that. Yeah. And I think that's um, that's part of what, what bonds us together and does bring you close. And and for me, you know, I, I we went off of that. We were part of a commencement for a brand new school last week. And I cried through that whole silly ceremony. <laughs> I mean, it was just one of those things. But yeah. I mean, like, I, I grew close to the kids. I can tell you where they're going to school. I mean, I know them because I that's just part of who I am. I, I just, in, in the last several months of getting to know that client, knowing their people, their leadership, their students, their graduates, being with them in rehearsals, uh, listening to them speak, working with them speaking, and then uh, watching the graduates it was emotional. Um, and, I, and I think that's part of, part of who I am as a creative when I do business with people. I do, we, we do, but you do too. We both become part of that part of that group part of that family mm-hmm. uh even even our obviously our corporate people we're part of that we we celebrate their successes well, i mean <clears throat> speaking of ace a wedding we did with ace um you know we, we all had dinner with the the mother and father of the bride after the wedding because we all just were so close and we couldn't handle not seeing each other exactly, that's exactly <laughs> right and, and, and here we are you know, a couple of years later and we're doing one of the sisters weddings. ready, ready for wedding number two. We're, we're back exactly again. Right. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's I think example. that's, that's really good. I, I love what you said about we culture, the we, <clears throat> the we language. That's, that is real intentional with what we do and how we do things as a company. We want to be, we want to see ourselves as part of that organization. We're just an extension of them. We're another department. We're a department across town. Why do we want to say it? But we are an extension to them. And so we, you know, we do this. I noticed on a call yesterday, we were both using. Let me say, it also just makes your work more fun. <laughs> I mean, if you're friends with your clients, how how great is that that you get to work with your friends? You know, if you're making friends. That's yeah. Cool. I think the other thing for me is I like to think about the next one. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm naturally thinking about it. Um, you know, whatever I do, I'm I'm if I'm baking something, I made this concoction last night for dinner. I wanted chicken pot pie, but I didn't have time, so I put together mm-hmm. peas and carrots and bread and kind of made my own. Yeah. But you know, when I was fixing it and tasting it, it's That's a long weird. story. No, it's no, a pot pie. I had to have a crust. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but when I was putting it together, I was thinking about when I make this next time. And that's just kind of how I do things. When I'm writing something, when I write this next time, or at the next meeting, I'm going to do this, or at the you know next time I wear this the shirt, next time you I'll make do pot pie with bread. And so <laughs> that's a bad example. <laughs> but I, I think the I think the uh, that carries through to events. I'm, I'm constantly thinking about that, and so I I'm not afraid to say that to a client of, hey, next year when we do this, or our next commencement, our next mm-hmm. party, our next celebration, the next time we yeah, honor using that language, the, the person we need to remember this, helpful. or. 
you know, the one thing I learned this year was, uh, you know, as the ward recipients go across stage, we need to have the photographer ready to take their picture uh, when they're recognized, you know, and so next, next year we'll do that. Mm -hmm. So again, that's the language of we're already there. We're already at next year. Next year, I'll be sure to tell a photographer, let's, let's take their picture as we're announcing their name. So we get that level of surprise. Um, and that, I get, that comes very natural to me. That's how I naturally think. But I think that's an intentional thing we do as a company that does go towards earning that next business. Right. The other thing I, I, we often say, and I realize what I'm about to say was not in the content meeting. So I apologize to you because it's going to be a total surprise. But you know, I think about sometimes, we've talked about this a lot, that we are not in a, we are in a space where we think about the big picture. And you've mm -hmm. really helped me think about that big picture of what the next five, 10 events looks like or the next five or 10 years looks like with that client. And we have a friend who does not do that as well. And we're talking about some of the things they do sometimes where they're, they're so focused on that event mm -hmm. that they'll make someone mad because they're not thinking about the big picture. And it's like, you know, if you would just say, hey, I'll take care of that $500 or I'll take care of that or I won't do that or whatever, rather than leaving that in a space where you're ending that relationship. And I think that's got to be said. I mean, I think that's, again, we didn't talk about it ahead of time, but I think that's something that's got to be said of, of, I want whatever business I'm doing with them, it's not my last time with them. Yeah. And you're, I you're never think that way. Long I'm, I'm going for the long haul. And even, even in some of our conversations afterwards, where we're talking about billing. Mm -hmm. I'm billing for the long haul. Yeah. And I'm saying, oh, no, 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 we're not charging for that. That was our mistake or we did that wrong or or they didn't they didn't know about that let's not charge for that so yeah. so you know i mean it can it can create a struggle sometimes in those conversations but i think it's it's that long term and again you've, you've really helped me understand that i also think evaluation with our clients are That's important. What I was gonna say yeah we we really try and um schedule a debrief um, after every event. So we all get together, all the planners, uh, everyone who's involved in planning, um, maybe the committee chair, whatever, and just kind of walk through the event and say, okay, how can we make this better next time? Uh, especially if it's you know, an annual event or something like that. Um, we always try to debrief. The other thing that I, I think of a lot a couple of years ago. Um, and again, that sets you up for next year. Uh, re, yeah, absolutely. Re, repeat business. A couple of years ago, we uh, we do to repeat myself. We did, <laughs> we did our owners retreat. We do where we we go off or go away or go to Starbucks, or whatever, mm -hmm. and we talk about all the things we want to do this year and how we want to do it, do it better. Uh, which, by the way, I think that's a great tip for anybody in business together. Uh, do it as often as you need to. Yeah. Um, we we do it we do it weekly, but we also do it yearly. Uh, but I remember that time when you said, "I want to." I want to get clients that are year round that we are working with every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was super impactful to me to think about uh, that actually, it actually changed some of how we do business. We, we uh, quickly developed a graphics department in house so we can quickly pick up graphics easier and we can do that year round for people. Yeah. Uh, we can help people kind of think through other elements of guest experiences because we want that year round. It's not just, Hey, We'll see you this March, and we won't see you again until next March. Because mm -hmm. um, I think that's well, and, and once you have that relationship with a client, it's it's easier to build on that relationship, uh, and you kind of multiply your efforts by doing you know whether it's the annual report or the next event that they're going to do that year, or you know, maybe some smaller events or whatever. Um, you know, one again, once you have that client, it's easier to. Well, I, I think, much you're doing you know, some, uh, again, in event planning, I, I think it translates to other businesses easily, creative businesses of sometimes we'll give something for free. Like, oh, you need help with your board meeting? We're not going to charge you for that because we do your huge event. We're not going to, that's no big deal. Let us, yeah. But let us be involved in that. Or and, your volunteer luncheon. Or, exactly. Yeah. Or uh, even personal things. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, it'll help you with your wedding. Or, you know, I told a client the other day, I would uh, loan them our wedding kit. You know, mm -hmm. our, uh, they're helping with their sister's wedding. And I, you know, they're, they're a good client. We do a ton of events for them. They're year round. And uh, I said, hey, we'll, we'll loan you our wedding kit when it comes time to that wedding. 
because I want to help them. I, don't, I wouldn't charge for that. I wouldn't make a big deal about that. But I think that's part of how we earn, like, she can't tell me, no, we're not going to do their event again because she wants our wedding again. No, <laughs> no I think that, I think there's a certain element of that, that she, we have that relationship that mm-hmm. she wouldn't look somebody, somewhere else um, because we have that, that continually building, building events for the, or building business for the next year. Yeah. And I think, you know, just looking, um, you know, strategically uh, to get repeat business, obviously you've got to be doing events that are repeatable. <laughs> you know, you want right. to do the annual events, the annual fundraisers, the, um, the annual board meeting, whatever it is that does repeat uh, every year. I agree with that, but I also think there are sometimes like weddings where you just have to look around the room and figure out who is your next client. Right, they don't have to have six kids. And they could have a, a really brother-in-law. Good or, bridesmaid, yeah. And uh, and that's, I, I think that's- that the brother-in-law is gonna get married again. That's, <laughs> well, you might. I mean, <laughs> Maybe it could, it's a wait, nephew. It could, be a bro- <clears throat> it could be a brother-in-law who has a single brother-in-law. Oh, yes, yeah, that works. yes, yes. So, but I, you know, I think, I think if I'm doing an anniversary for a corporate event and it's their 35th anniversary, I'm going to look and see, hey, who are their vendors who are also being recognized? Hey, we've been in business since day one. You know, we're in business for 34 exactly. years. Exactly. Uh-huh. Can we get, or, or like in the wedding's a good example of a lot of times at a wedding, I will give special attention to, you know, the bridal party. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. go the extra mile for the bridal party, maybe even give them a gift to the bridal party because I want them to see, hey, we are fun to work with. Hey, we know what we're doing. We've got to act together. And I have, I have friends who do weddings and they might snap at the bridal party. You know, they might like they might show themselves the bridal party because they're not paying the bill. They don't care. Right. And I always think, wow, they're missing an opportunity there. You got to look at every person every... at the event as your potential next client. Including the people at the registration table coming through the doors yes absolutely yes, every yeah, absolutely and i think that's uh yeah that's a great great point and great help to uh to think about the repeat business <clears throat> i i just really can't say enough that we're treating every person that we're interacting with as the next potential client yeah and that includes vendors mm-hmm. and also thinking great about those help. vendors giving us repeat business mm-hmm and those vendors bringing people to us because they say they like us. I, I, uh, you know, we did a tour of the hotel in another city the other day, mm-hmm. and uh, it was really interesting to me how much the salesperson at the hotel kind of carried on to our client about how good we are to work with. Mm. And it was one of those like she's so they, getting they did a sales job for us. She's getting repeat business for us, but she's also she's telling other people she wants our repeat business. She wants us to come back there. Uh-huh. We're great to work with. And it made me feel good. It makes me want to go back there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's kind of a cool thing. I think that's something definitely to, to think about. I think, again, creatives, when we're in business, we, we take our work so personal that we forget um, that we forget to look for opportunities for the next project. We also do, if, you, if you've noticed creatives, we do projects that end. You know, if we're painting a painting, mm-hmm. we're painting it like it's our last painting. If we're writing a song, we're writing it like it's our last song. We tend to we tend to kind of create to create an end. And uh, you know, I think how much different would it be if a if a artist is delivering a painting to a new buyer and they're looking at the other wall and going, Hey, I could do a painting here, a painting here. that can match this and we can bring out the colors in your chairs or whatever. And they're looking for repeat business immediately and how much difference that would make. Or uh, a photographer who's taking family pictures and says, wow, next year, I want you to wear those same clothes and we're going to take a picture of what those look like together and compare them. Well, you have to hire them again, you know, or if you're a graphic artist and you say next time when we use your logo, I want to use it over here on this image and I want to do this and I've got some ideas of how we can take what we've done now and make it better next time. And, and again, it's just, it's just working towards that, thinking towards that. Good stuff. Good good stuff. stuff. Um, next episode, I'm looking ahead. Oh, Oh, what do we got? It's not my favorite topic. 
It's not my favorite topic. <laughs> Next one's dealing it with be, setbacks. Though. I don't know. That's a hard it, It'll way. be helpful, though. We have to talk about it? Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been great. We, uh, um, we've we enjoyed our time together. Yeah, appreciate you guys listening. And uh, coming back to listen again. Yeah, yeah, repeating business. Oh, that's why I brought up the next topic. I'm getting people to come back. Right. There you go. See, you intentional. Know, you're thinking ahead. I wasn't manipulative. It was intentional. Right. Did I say what it was? Email us at Todd <laughs> at RumbleDrum.com or Joe at RumbleDrum.com. I'm Joe. And don't, He's Todd. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't but forget he sometimes to gets follow my email. us. Like and he this. sometimes sends Subscribe. email from my account. If he's sending email from his iPad, because it comes from my account for whatever reason. Weird. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah change that. Anyway, we'd love it if you'd like us and follow us. If you just like us, that'd be nice. But go ahead and tell people you like us by following us on Instagram and Face Facebook. All um, the social medias. Book. LinkedIn. That's a good one, too. Mm-hmm. LinkedIn. We leave LinkedIn out sometimes. We even have a Pinterest account. So That's right. We do. Uh, follow us on Pinterest. Lots of Christmas stuff on there. But we'd love love to hear from you. Love to uh, have you review us. Tell us how we did. Uh, on all those places you listen to podcasts, that's how we get ratings. Ratings are good. We need to be rated. Tell us how we're doing. So give us those best ratings for that podcast. So. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. Have a great week. Take care. <laughs>